To give you a closer view of the tools and guns that we're going to be talking about, uh, this is of course the Sheriff's model. Now it is the smallest and lightest of these pieces and weighs two and three quarter pounds. This, the Buffalo, with its longer barrel, weighs three and one eighth pounds. Whereas these two pieces weigh very nearly the same thing. This is a little over five pounds, this is a little under five pounds, all loaded and ready to shoot. Now we're going to take these out and chronograph them. Now that I have this scope on here, I'd like to show you a little bit more about that. This is a sight mark, this is a sight mark scope, 4x32, so it's a fixed power. And this particular scope they call the Core SX. Uh, I've shot a number of pistol scopes over the years, and this is a brand new American made scope, and I like it. It has a good long eye relief, and in the advertising, they say that it is proofed with 50 caliber pistol rounds, which generates a very much more recoil than this gun will. Actually, even with full power loads, the weight of this gun, yeah, the recoil should be moderate. So we're going to go out and shoot it. We have our 14-inch barrel Ruger here. And we have a target at 50 yards. Now we rough sighted it in at about 25 and got it somewhat near the point of aim. So we're going to see if we can get a fair zero here at 50. Well, that's five shots at 50 yards. It looks like I would need to go a little bit higher and perhaps a little bit to the left. But that's a pretty ragged group. I will have to do a little better about that so far as my rest is concerned. We have the chronograph set up as you can see. And of course the target is 50 yards downrange. And I fired three shots and these with the barrel actually resting on something firm, uh, two of those three actually hit very near the center of the bull, but a little bit to the right. So I think the general pattern does need to be moved a little bit to the left. So we're going to make that adjustment and continue shooting. But so far the pistol and the crony has done very, very well. And we've got three good figures that I believe, that I can believe, and, uh, yeah, this is not a 44 Magnum, but it's a, it's a pretty good load and extremely mild recoil. Well, we're doing pretty good. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And I don't know where number six is. It may have doubled on one of these shots over here. I can certainly see five and four of them. This, these would have been good killing shots on a piece of game, no doubt about that. But we're, we're getting there for the first time out. And now we're going to shoot the Colt Super Walker, which has been loaded up since December, and see how it dies. Well, the five shots from the Walker scattered around the lower part of the target. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, there's no doubt in which is the better shooter at 50 yards, even from just a couple of cylinder folds. 
Well, next up we have the Pieta revolver. This is a long barrel buffalo revolver that I have nitride coated. Uh, originally it was a bright stainless steel gun. This is a round ball load by the way, so yeah, it's not as heavy a projectile as the other two. Well, the Pieta really did nail the bull twice here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So with this load, certainly better than the walker. At least here, you're, you know, it was more apt to get a hit on a piece of game at this range. Even including this one. It's about a six inch gap. Yeah, this is more like a seven inch, seven inch group there. Before I put the pistol away, I'm going to shoot it one more time and check the zero and adjust that before I actually take it hunting. We have shot our pistols and we have our results. And what have we learned? Well, I've had a chance now to shoot these three guns clean them up, do the calculations, and report the results. This pistol is now reloaded, it's been cleaned thoroughly, and is now ready to go on its first hog hunt, which may be as early as tomorrow morning. So we have that one done. What we did was to demonstrate that in fact this load in this pistol with triple seven and these 255 grain bullets did indeed make the equivalency of the load that I was using in my Super Walker. Yeah, it managed to make it. And it also shot more accurately than the Super Walker and equally with this pistol, the long barrel Pieta with a round ball load. Now so far as velocities and energies went, what we achieved with our Ruger here was an average of about 1,039 feet per second. <coughs> what we achieved with our Ruger here was an average of 1,039 feet per second and 611 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. All right? Now, out of our walker, this was loaded with a 220 grain bullet and a black powder load. And it was running in the 935 feet per second range and it generated 427 foot-pounds. Which is also what is about often reported from this particular class of pistols. As I say, this was a black powder load. Now the Pieta was loaded with old Einsford FFFG and it generated 1,060 feet per second and with a much lighter round ball of 352 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. So basically we had 350, 425, and 611 in round numbers. Well, what did all of this do so far as enlarging the length of the barrel went? Well, as it turned out, a few years ago, I shot the pistol with the same load with this former barrel, which was seven and a half inches long. 
and that one generated 566 foot-pounds of muzzle energy compared to 611. Not terribly much difference. You did get some benefit in velocity from the longer barrel. You did get more benefit because you increased the weight of the pistol as did putting on the scope. Now, the scope versus the red dot sight versus iron sights. Okay, how did that rack up? Well, with the scope and these bullets, which are second best in quality, by the way, I didn't use my first best, I didn't use my highest quality bullets because I want to preserve those for hunting. But this would average about a 5-inch group at 50 yards. And this was one of those targets. And this was another of them. So far as the Pieta and the round ball, its group was larger by approximately an inch at 50 yards. And so this was its pattern. Whoop. All right. Now the Super Walker had suffered some trauma and that its red dot sight is broken. The lens is badly fractured there. And this may have impacted the result considerably. Uh, as a result, I think, no bullets from the Super Walker actually registered on the paper target. They all hit low. And also had a wider dispersion. Uh, more like a foot or so at 50 yards. So, all things considered, yeah, this is certainly going to be the gun I'm going to be hunting with this year. Now, I've got some comments from various people, including a gunsmith, who say, Well, all right, so some of real, some of these you revolvers every time you clean them. Oh, uh, yes, I do. And, uh, the reason is black powder is very corrosive indeed, and if you do not, even though these pistols have been black nitride coated, uh, you will ultimately have some problems. The same with the stainless steel Ruger. Yeah, we do that. So, these function quite well, by the way. Just fine. So it sounds like you're opening a bank ball. And uh, yeah, these pistols will shoot very well. Now, I'm a super walker here. I'm really not going to use this pistol anymore. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it or my modification so far as function goes. I just have a better gun. So I'm going to use a better gun. And so this one is for sale. I'm going to put a red dot sight on it. It comes with a shoulder holster already fitted. It has a nitride finish on it. It has this base. It has a new loading lever. It has the cap retaining pin here. It has an action job. And basically, uh, the starting price on this one is $300. And so if someone's interested, yeah, uh, we'll sort of take bids on it over the next month, and uh, the best one over $300 can take it home with, it, with all the gear that goes with it. Uh, you can't have, well, the nitride coating alone is $200, by the way. So that gives you an idea. To say nothing of the other work done on it. So I'm going to work with, I'm going to retain these two pistols, and of course, this is the one that we're going to take out hunting. So the next time you see it, yeah, hopefully it's going to have a piece of dead game on it. So for now, this is Hovey Smith.
reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time.